From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast present that immortal character created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. <laughs> this week's story... The Adventure of the Elusive Agent, Part 3, the concluding episode. Well, Mr. Holmes, before long, Gustav will kill Dr. Watson if you do not talk. Peter, I warn you if anything happens to Watson. Ah, but it will. You do not know Gustav, a man with the smoothness of silk, but hard as stone beneath. You only can save Dr. Watson. I am quite aware of my dilemma. But what you and Gustave have failed to observe is that... Get back, get back, you British swine. I'll kill you here and now. Now, I'd like my listeners to see if they can make a correct deduction like Sherlock Holmes. I'll set the scene for you. An alert, well-dressed young man is counting out some money. He says 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. That's right, 45. Now, what is this young man doing? Well, I'll tell you, because you'd hardly believe the evidence of your own eyes. He was paying only $45 for that excellent new Clipper Craft suit. That's right. Only $45 for a nationally famous Clipper Craft suit of carefully selected tested worsted, of exceptionally fine tailoring, with the distinctive styling that sets Clipper Craft suits apart from any suits ordinarily sold at anywhere near this price. How can they do it? And I'll tell you that. More than 1,200 independent merchants have pooled their tremendous buying power to make those low prices possible for Clippercraft. So compare Clippercraft clothes with clothes costing many dollars more, and you'll agree that never before has there been such value in fabrics, such value in styling, such value in workmanship. In short, you get America's greatest clothing value when you buy Clippercraft clothes. Dr. Watson, last week, in relating the adventure of the elusive agent, you arrived in Berlin and finally reached the house of Emil Marco, the phantom German secret agent you'd been pursuing over half a continent. Yes, Mr. Harris, but unfortunately we found ourselves in enemy hands. Shall I recall the circumstances for our audience? By all means, Dr. Watson. As you know, it was the year 1913, a year when Germany and Britain were striving for mastery, a year when ominous war clouds were already gathering. Holmes's brother, Sir Mycroft, who was head of British intelligence, had called us in to recover some plans for the new and top secret British tech, which German intelligence had stolen. Well, after a series of desperate circumstances, Holmes and I managed to obtain half of the plans, of which only one copy existed. Without the other half, the entire set was useless. You may recall, Mr. Harris, we pursued Marco to Paris, and there we almost lost our lives in a bomb explosion. Our luggage was rifled, and German agents managed to steal the half of the plans that we carried. But they were only clever imitations. Then we picked up Emil Marco's trail to Berlin. And what finally happened in Berlin, Dr. Watson? Well, a British secret agent, posing as a news vendor, a man uh, named Collins, directed us to Marco's home. There, we were trapped by Marco's henchman, Gustav, and a brute of a man named Peter. Peter had seized Holmes, as Gustav said. Mr. Holmes, I once said we never kill our opponents in an ordinary manner. We torture them to death. I want to know the truth about the papers, Holmes. But perhaps it will require a bit of persuasion. Go on, Peter. Yeah, Gustav, I will make Holmes answer. <laughs> That's it, Peter. Go on, persuade him. Uh, yeah. uh, surely, Gustav, you must know I... I wouldn't be carrying our half of the genuine plans. They are, of course, somewhere in England, safely in the custody of the Admiralty, where you will never lay hands on them. We thought of that, Holmes. It is possible you're telling the truth. But there is another possibility, too. 
Are you as patriotic as you seem, Mr. Holmes? You are not an official employee of the British government. I believe you may not be cooperating with England either, but playing this game alone, trying to collect both halves of the real plan yourself. Fantastic nonsense. It would be so profitable for you to have both halves and sell them to the highest bidder. Isn't that what you're attempting, Holmes? I repeat the idea is absurd. Answer me. Help him to answer me, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> if you have deceived the British, I will be glad to work with you, Holmes. But you must tell me the truth. Tell me exactly what you're doing. I must say the weather here in Berlin is rather chilly for this time of year. You won't keep this up for long, Holmes. Again, Peter. Uh, Holmes. Good Lord, I... Come, Watson, don't look so agitated. I, I have no doubt I shall survive the efforts of this butcher. One has only to make the brain the master of the body, to concentrate, to, to divorce it from its physical functions. A trick I learned in the East, Watson. Speak, you swine, speak. Don't have better Gustav. This man Holmes is iron. He will not speak. All right. Release him, Peter. So, you still won't disclose the truth, eh, Holmes? I was remarking to Watson here that your climate in Berlin is usually much warmer at this time. I've had enough of your stupid English humor, Mr. Holmes. I have a better idea. Really? Dr. Watson and I are going on a little trip together to my private retreat. You, Peter, will stay here and guard Mr. Holmes. Well, sounds like some new deviltry, eh, Holmes? Just what is this proposition, Gustav? Very simple. Very simple indeed. I shall be in touch with Peter here by telephone. If, Mr. Holmes, you do not disclose the truth about the plans in 24 hours, my hostage and your friend, Dr. Watson, will die. <laughs> Newspaper, Fräulein? Afternoon newspaper? No, go away. I do not want any newspaper. But you will find it interesting to read for your lunch hour. The Kaiser has told the British... Go that... away. Stop following me. And if you persist, I shall call the police. Step into this alley here, quick. What do you want? For... Collins, R-52 British Intelligence. The fleet rides high at Scapa Flow. Quick, identify and give me the counterpass. Greta Brunner, telephone employee, Berlin Central Exchange, G-19. Counterpass, the dahlias grow high in Devonshire. Good. Move back further into the alley. Yes. Here, where you can't be seen. Yes. Now listen. A friend of ours has been spirited from a house at 27 Ludwigstrasse. Another friend is being held there also under custody. A telephone has been installed at the house. Yes, go on. It's possible that a call will come to the house from the German agent who has left it. Can you tap that call and find out where it came from? Yes. Yes, I think so. Another girl works the switchboard on that line, See but See that I... she becomes ill and has to go home. You know how. Yes. If the call comes through, get in touch with me at once. I'll be waiting at this number. Your number, please. Lützo 8834. Lützo... Eight eight three four. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Who is this? Peter, this is Gustav. Is Holmes weakened yet? No, the Schwein will not talk. I see. Tell him that I am cutting the time to twelve hours. I will continue to hold his friend here at the Schloss until then. After that, it will be all over. <laughs> Well, Mr. Holmes, before long, Gustav will kill Dr. Watson if you do not talk. I'm quite aware of my dilemma. I'm also aware that if I gave your superior the information which I... Open up. Open the door. Who is that? Who do you think, you fool? I couldn't wait. I've done away with Watson. Now we'll give the same treatment to Holmes. Open the door. Yeah, Gustav. One moment. I was just trying again to get Holmes to talk and... Uh... <gasps> oh. Thank you, Collins. I must compliment you on your faculty for appearing in the right place at the right moment. Thank you, sir. I think I've located Dr. Watson with the cooperation of one of our agents at the Berlin Telephone Exchange. Capital, man. Capital. Where is he? He's being held in a deserted castle at Spandau, sir. It belongs to the man Gustav's ancestral family. Excellent. Collins. Yes, sir. You're not above taking a dangerous risk. Danger is my vocation, sir. Good fellow. 
First, you'll dress in dead Peter's clothes here, his cap, overcoat, everything. They'll fit you a trifle loosely, perhaps, but well enough. In short, you will impersonate Gustav's dead henchman. Understand, Collins? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Then I take it we're going to Spandau? With all possible haste. Time is already running short, and the life of my good friend, Dr. Watson, hangs in the balance. <laughs> Before you buy that new spring suit, just remember this. When you get a new spring Clippercraft worsted suit for only $45, an all-wool covert cloth top coat for $40, or an all-wool Clippercraft gabardine top coat for $42.50, you're getting the most for your money. Clippercraft clothes take their name from the famous Clipper ships that established honest New England quality everywhere in the world. Yet they're as modern as the Clipper planes that fly around the world today. Yes, you can trust Clippercraft clothes and the men who sell them. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes bearing the Clippercraft label. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits and top coats. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker's Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. In Brooklyn, Abram and Strauss, in Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, New York, and in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Well, Dr. Watson, Dr. Watson, Mr. Holmes and Collins, the British agent, were off to rescue you at the castle in Spandau, where Gustav held you as his prisoner. Yes, Mr. Harris, the castle in Spandau was a huge deserted spot. In the dead of night, Holmes stood with Collins before the entrance. Look, Mr. Holmes, vultures flying over the castle. Instinct, Collins. They expect a human death. Could Gustav have killed Watson? Are we too late? Perhaps. Now, you will walk to the main gate. Yes. In your disguise as Peter, you'll ring. You'll keep Gustav occupied at the front door. I understand. If Gustav becomes at all suspicious... Shoot to kill. I shall. I will dash to the rear of the castle. I'll prowl about till I find the room where Watson's being held captive and free him. Then we shall attack Gustav while he's talking to you. Excellent. Good luck. Will you come back, Gustav? Answer me. Watson. It's Holmes. Holmes, by Jove. How, how did you get in here? There'll be time later to explain. Come along. Collins of Intelligence is downstairs in this castle chatting with Gustav. Yes, I, I see. All right, now take this revolver. We shall steal downstairs and surprise Gustav. This way. Up the stairs. As cautiously as you can, right? What on earth has happened? Something's gone wrong with Collins. Terribly wrong. Hurry, Watson, run down these stairs. Wait, look. Staggering up these stairs toward us. It's Gustav. His face is covered with blood. Yes, he discovered Collins was disguised. They exchanged shots. Well, Gustav's been hit two or three times, you see. He's holding his side there. Blood from his chest, too. He's, he's grasped the railing. Holmes! Dr. Watson! Where one German falls, many more will rise. We will yet have the plans. You seem successful now, but any victory over us... It's an illusion. Oh, he's, he's falling down the stairs. Just Holmes. let him fall to the death he so eminently deserves, Watson. But where is our own agent? Where's Collins? This way, toward the front of the building, where he and Gustav shut it out. There he is, lying on the floor there. Is he dead? Yes, Watson. Poor devil. Shot through the head, thank heaven, the first bullet from Gustav's revolver ended it for him. He didn't suffer. I shall inform my brother Mycroft at Whitehall that Agent Collins died valiantly in the performance of his assigned duty. Where to now, Holmes? We've still not found Germany's half of the plans for the new tank. We've still not found the master spy Emil Marker. The answer to those crucial questions, Watson, lies in London. Yes, but we left London days and days ago. We fought our way here to Berlin to find Marco and retrieve the papers. Well, Nevertheless, the answer is in London. We must get out of Germany. How? We're surrounded. We shall board the very next train from Berlin to the French border and meet whatever awaits us. Well, so far 
we're doing well, Holmes. We've caught the train. We're on our way to the French border. If we can remain alive to reach it, Watson. They should while we're returning to London, Holmes. We'll... The conductor. Tickets, please. Well, here you are, sir. Thank you, my dear. I presume they're... They're in order? Yes, so they are, my dear. Just uh, one more item have I to tend to, and... I don't think you will, sir. Use the button on the Volvo box and strike him down. Yes. Oh, oh. Good work. Why did you seize him, Holmes? He's hardly reached for his ticket punch when you pounced upon him. The bulge in his coat pocket, I realised it might be a revolver, as indeed it is. No, he's another of Marco's endless supply of killers. He was assigned a murderer's here. Well, we can't leave him here. There'll be an inquiry. Oh, yes, we can leave him. You see, we're leaving this train. At the first stop? No, immediately. There may be other German agents aboard, but there are just two of us. We can't take the risk. My intention, you see, Watson, was to do just this, even before the conductor arrived. We boarded the train ostentatiously, so they'd make plans for us all along the route. Now, we shall spring the trap. Come, the corridor. Open that door, Watson. Holmes, we can't leave off the train at this speed. It's our only chance. We shall wait for a run of what is apparently soft earth. Now relax as you go, Watson. Arms and legs loose. So try to right, roll over easily as you strike the earth. You ready? Yes, ready. After me, Watson. Jump! <laughs> It's wonderful to be back on the streets of London, eh, Holmes? Yes, quite. But why have we run here to Soho? We haven't even reported to Whitehall. Because, Watson, we must visit the shop where this gigantic and gruesome trip began. The shop of Grimsby, the tobacconist. Grimsby shop? But why? Because we've journeyed to foreign cities, eluded death, and fought the greatest spiring of our day, all because of a few sentences spoken by the shy, friendly tobacconist here in this shop. Shall we speak to him... Just once more. Back in London, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Yes, Grimsby. Wasn't Mr. Emil Marco at his hotel here in London? I described him to you. Tall, thin, and a nervous habit of twitching his mouth. Yes, you did describe him, Grimsby. But he was not at the hotel in London, nor was he in Paris, nor was he in any of the dark and bloody corners of the continent where we sought him. You know why, sir? I can't imagine. Because there isn't an Emil Marco. There never was an Emil Marco. This master of the German spy net that Watson and I and all of British intelligence have been pursuing is an illusion. Created by you, Grimsby. Holmes, I, I can't believe it. When Watson and I first visited your shop, Grimsby, I asked about your client. Because I detected the odor of a rare tobacco in the room where we found a dead agent. I wanted the man who smoked that tobacco. He was the chief. He had the missing half of Britain's plans. You are that man, Grimsby. You didn't expect us, did you? You're smoking that brand of tobacco at this very moment. So I am. Yes, I had hoped in creating Marco to attract you to Germany. I could learn the truth from you there. Then I could dispense with you. Very advisable. You could operate with ease in Germany rather than here in Britain. I simply informed my associate to pass the lie along. Drawing you to Berlin with the Phantom Marco as a magnet. I cannot wait to bargain with you for your half of the plan. I shall just destroy my half. Reducing both my opponents to an equal status again. Your half being worthless without mine. I shall burn my half. It's here in my pocket. Britain will never have the weapon it seeks. Here, set a match to these papers I hold in my hand. Go on, Dr. Watson, or I shall blow your head off with this revolver. I can't do it, Holmes. Do as he says, Watson. He'll kill you. Very well. Thank you. Now I must leave. Lock this door from the outside. Do not attempt to shout or leave until I disappear down the street. Or I will shoot. Ah, Wiedersehen, gentlemen. He's gone, Holmes. Vanished into the crowd. The plans, they're, they're burned to a crisp. Quickly, Watson, pick up that chair. Don't lose time trying to force the lock on that door. Smash the glass with that chair. Yes, right you are. <laughs> now, cab, Watson. Grimsey will try to leave London instantly. A cab to Waterloo Station. Well, 
Why should Grimsby be here at Waterloo Station, Holmes? Because he realizes Whitehall would turn London topsy-turvy to find him. He must return to Germany. All aeroplanes in this area are in British hands. He must travel by boat train to the Channel. And this is where he'd board the next train. The revolver handy? Yes. There he is, by that gate. All right, I'll stop him. Stand where you are, Grimsby. Home. Dr. Watson. I'm afraid we had the upper hand now, sir. Now, before we turn you over to the authorities, where are your half of the plans? You saw me destroy them. I burnt them before your own eyes at the shop. Oh, no, Grimsby. You played card after card by which we have been deluded. But I say you still have the missing half of the plans of Britain's new weapon on your person. This last ruse of yours is quite transparent. And you burnt an ordinary piece of paper. Did I? I'll search him, Holmes. All right, put up your hands, Grimsby. Oh, he wouldn't carry the papers openly in his pockets, Watson. Nor in his wallet. He would conceal them in a spot where no one might think to look. Except, of course, your humble servant. I'll find them. The search isn't necessary, Watson. One must always analyze a personality in its own milieu. Within itself, it contains the answer to its mysteries. Now, where would a tobacconist be likely to conceal a few small papers? Why, beneath the tobacco in his tin. Let's have a look at that tin. Yeah, I'll open it. It's filled with tobacco. And beneath the very same rare tobacco which first launched us on this great adventure, Watson? The, the plans, Holmes. Well, the, the plans. Well, Dr. Watson, the adventure of the elusive agent was really one of the most exciting adventures you and Mr. Holmes have ever had. And a crucial point in the history of World War I, may I add. Yes, indeed, Mr. Harris. As you know, the British did succeed in keeping their plans for the tank a secret. It proved to be a very decisive weapon. Well, where was Mr. Holmes' half of the plans, Doctor? In a vault at Whitehall, Mr. Harris, under special guard of the Royal Navy. Well, Dr. Watson, these past three weeks have been very exciting and memorable ones. Yes, but do you think, Mr. Harris, our audience is in favor of these longer stories? You see... Uh, some of our more colorful stories are too long to compress into one short program. Well, then, Dr. Watson, a letter or a postcard from our listeners will give us the answer. Just address Clippercraft and care of the station to which they're listening and tell us what they think. I presume, Dr. Watson, that your next memoir is just as gripping as this one. Well, next week, Mr. Harris, I shall relate a story about Holmes and myself that I have called The Mad Miners of Cardiff. It occurred in Wales at an abandoned coal mine. It concerned a miner's jacket, a murder committed in the darkest depths of the earth, and a spectacle so awful it drove human beings out of their minds. The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts Featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockram. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley. Dr. Watson by George Spelvin. This week's story was written by Max Ehrlich and Howard Merrill, with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be a friendly neighbor and buy your Easter seals to provide proper medical care, healthful recreation, and special vocational training for crippled children. Every Easter seal you buy helps a crippled child to meet the challenge of a handicap. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Mad Miners of Cardiff. This is Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.